Today, we're going to be covering some potentially life-saving information that all has to do with choking in one way or another. The inspiration for this video comes from a very deep and important situation that happened to me personally. And that's going to be the time that I spent with your mother last night. Enough f***ing around, we're going to be starting with the Heimlich Maneuver. I'm going to show you how to do that on kids slash babies, adults slash yourself, and XL slash big ass mother I'm currently editing right now, and I've come to the realization that I curse way too f***ing much. Damn. So I obviously curse way too much. So instead of leaving the curse words in the video, I decided that I'm going to search up meme soundboard and I'm going to use the 19th option, which is... <laughs> of course. Next is going to be the doctor's ABCs. This is an acronym for some shit. I'm not going to explain what it is now. You'll get there when we get there. Patience is a virtue. And lastly, we're going to be covering CPR slash AR. Side note, a lot of y'all are probably thinking, who the hell is this guy and what makes him qualified to teach me this shit? Well, you would be surprised to know that my credentials are that I was a lifeguard for two years when I was 16, damn near a decade ago. Holy shit. I am old as fuck. Let's get right into it. We're going to be starting with the Heimlich Maneuver on a baby or child. A sure tell sign that a kid or baby is choking is they're going to literally be grabbing at their neck, not making any sound at all. That's how you know something is stuck in their throat and you need to take action. First thing you want to do is pick the child up, make sure they're facing away from you, and then... Okay, what you're actually going to do is turn her around. Oh, shit. Damn, she got a little bit of lazy eye now. Pick them up, face them away from you, put them over your forearm, and tilt them over at about a 45-degree angle. And then right in the middle of their back, you're going to give three really solid smacks. You don't want to actually, like, smack them. You want to give it a nice, like, solid pat. And if you're doing this to a literal fucking baby that's super tiny and small, you're going to grab them by the face like this on your forearm with one leg on each side. Tilt them quite literally almost upside down at another 45 degree angle, but like downward. And you're going to give light taps on the back. What that's hopefully going to do is take whatever's in their throat or mouth and launch it out of their esophagus. If that doesn't work, you can always go back to the first option. Because that will work. But bullshit, if that doesn't work, I seriously do not know what to do after that. So you're going to have to probably figure that one out on yourself because I just don't know. I, 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 I time to maneuver on an adult. You're going to go up behind them. Take your dominant hand. Make a little fist like this, right into the middle of the chest, your non-dominant hand over that hand. And you want to make almost like a J motion, like a swooping J motion up and in. So you're going to go in and one more time with my face not in the way. We're going to go in and up, in and up, in and up. And hopefully whatever's in there is going to shoot out. Now, if somehow your dumb ass starts choking and there's absolutely no one around to help you, you have two options. Option number one is getting on the floor, putting a pillow down right about where your chest is going to land. Then you're just going to drop directly down to your chest. I'm not going to do it because I'm kind of a pussy. But you're not going to catch yourself. You're just going to uh, drop straight to your chest. Hopefully that little thud whenever you hit the ground is going to cause enough air pressure to push whatever's in your lung or throat out. Your second option is going to be sprinting to your next door neighbor's house as quickly as possible and praying to whatever God you believe in that somebody is home. Lastly, if you're trying to do the Heimlich Maneuver to somebody that is much bigger than you, aka a big back, you're going to put them up against the wall. You're going to take both your hands right in the middle of their chest and you're going to just push with as much force as you can and hopefully whatever's in there comes out. Now let's say you don't get to the person in time to do the Heimlich Maneuver and they are already on the ground past the f out. This is when the doctor's ABCs come into play. It's pretty much just an acronym to help you remember the steps you need to take from the very beginning of finding the person on the ground all the way up until when the paramedics get there and take over the situation for you. Starting off with D for danger. What this means is you're going to walk and look around the area or survey your scene for any dangerous things that may have caused them to pass the f out that just might harm you as well. The two main examples that they give for these is if you're in a water park setting and there's an exposed wire on the ground that is actively shocking anyone that walks by. You do not want to be a part of that. The second one is any chemical situation where there might be two chemicals mixed together that are are causing people to literally like pass out mustard gas things like that how you might figure those two things out i have no idea but that's what they teach you in the class r for a response what this means is you're going to walk up to the person you're going to clap in their face you're going to shake them a little bit just try to get them to wake up because what if they're just a drunk asshole on the ground asleep because you do not want to start giving cpr to a person that's just on the ground trying to tan s for shout which means you're pretty much just yelling and calling for someone else to come help you or just making it aware that somebody is in need of help and people need to start coming i would also like to add that i know in all the movies whenever something like this happens somebody just yells somebody call 911 don't do that. And the reason for that is because it's already been proven that if you tell a group of people that you need one person to do one specific thing without actually choosing someone, everyone is just going to assume that somebody else is going to take care of it because obviously he wasn't talking to me. So the best thing you can do is delegate tasks. Actually point at someone and say, you call 911. You go get towels. You get a bag of ice. Because if you give someone a task specifically and they acknowledge it, they're probably going to do it rather than just leaving it up to chance. A for airway. What this means is you want to check their airway to see if there's anything obstructing it. You're going to do this by literally just looking into their mouth and seeing if there's anything down in there. Sometimes you'll even be able to literally just grab that shit and pull it out and save their life that way. If there's any water or blood and shit like that, you're going to turn them onto their side and try to help sweep out anything and try to let it just kind of leak out of them. If there's nothing there, we're going to go to the next part, which is B for breathing, which is pretty much just checking for signs of life. We're going to do that by taking our cheek and ear 
putting it up to their mouth and nose, seeing if we can feel any breath on our cheek or hear anything coming out of their mouth and nose. While we're doing that, we're also gonna be looking at their chest to see if it rises and falls, because obviously if it's going up and down, that means they're breathing. Also wanna be checking their pulse by taking your two fingers, putting it up to their jugular and seeing if you can feel a heartbeat. Really wanna be doing all those things at the same time. If you're unable to, you can check the pulse after you see if they're breathing or not. After you check for breathing and a pulse, if one or both of those things are not happening, we're gonna move to the very last step, which is C for circulation, AKA starting CPR. CPR is something that I genuinely believe every single person should learn at one point or another in their life. The human body is delicate as and it's not hard for your heart to stop and people get stuck in their lungs and throat all the time. Pause, stop and giggle. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation or in dumb terms means that your heart's not pumping. So I'm gonna pump that for you so you do not end up in an urn somewhere. In some cases that can cause whatever's stuck in your lungs or throat to kind of pop out, but that is not the main focus of why you're pushing on the person's chest. What you're doing is trying to circulate the blood throughout their body by pumping their heart for them. However, AR or artificial respiration means that you're not breathing, so I'm gonna breathe for you by blowing air into your lungs, which is gonna, for one, get all the oxygen to your brain that you need to not become a vegetable, and two, hopefully get whatever's stuck between your lungs and throat out of your body. And in both cases, can and will save somebody's life if you do them correctly. So I urge you to go take some classes to learn CPR. If not, at very least, watch this video and learn from my dumb ass. At this point, you've already done your doctor ABCs. You are now kneeling next to the person that is incapacitated on the ground, and you're gonna start by Originally, I was not gonna add that bit to the final video, but it absolutely demolished my elbow to make it happen. So it quite literally has to go in now. So let's start with the first option where you determine that they're just not breathing. You're gonna go up to their mouth and give them something called two rescue breaths, which is just giving them two really big full breaths of air directly into their mouth with your mouth. In an ideal world, we'd have a little tool called a squeeze easy or something like that, which is pretty much just a protective barrier between your mouth and their mouth so you don't get any herpes. But we live in a very cruel world and that's not always an option. You're just gonna go straight mouth to mouth or you're gonna take your shirt, put it over your mouth because a lot of shirts are made out of cotton that's breathable. One, two. And you probably don't want to rest your elbow directly into the sternum, so just ignore that. If those two breaths do not go in and you do not see their chest rise and fall, that means that there's something obstructing their airway, so you have to get that shit out. So you're going to go back to the side and you're going to give them 30 compressions. You do that by taking both your hands and interlocking them together, taking the palm of your bottom hand and putting it directly in the middle of their chest and pushing down. The rule of thumb is you want to go about two inches into their chest with every compression. You might break a rib or two, but it is okay. I guarantee they're going to appreciate that more than being six feet underground. So you do your 30 compressions, one, two, skip a few 30, go back up, give them two more rest you breaths one two hopefully whatever was stuck in there is now out if it's not you're just going to rinse and repeat until it is if you do those two breaths their chest rises and falls but they're still not breathing on their own then you're going to start ar to do that you're going to give them one breath every roughly four seconds breath one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi four breath so on and so forth until either they start breathing on their own and wake up or the paramedics come and get you the out of the way however if they're not breathing and their heart is not beating, now you're gonna start CPR and is about to get serious. To do CPR, you're gonna be doing those 30 compressions. However, you have to do those 30 compressions to a rhythm. They usually teach you to have a song playing in the back of your head so you can follow along to the beat of the song. The song they tell you to use is that disco song, Staying Alive. <laughs> And this is a literal CPR certification video. I did not edit this at all. <laughs> but you can literally use any song you want as long as you're staying on beat. Once you finish those 30 compressions, you're gonna go back up here, give them two breaths, one, two, 30 compressions, breaths, compressions, breaths, compressions, and you're gonna continue that cycle until either they wake up and start breathing on their own or the paramedics come kick your out of the way and take over the situation. And yesterday I fucked up and forgot to show you how to do CPR on a baby or a kid that's just way, way smaller than you. Easiest way to tell when a baby needs to have CPR done to them is they're gonna be literally turning purple and they will be completely dead weight. First thing you wanna do is lay the baby flat on their back. Then you're gonna take your hand, put it directly on their forehead and tilt their head up just a little bit. What that's gonna do is make sure that their airway is nice and open so that nothing is obstructing it. Then very specifically, you wanna give the baby two half breaths if you do a full breath you will pop your baby if their chest doesn't go up and down then you're gonna flip it upside down and do what you do with the Heimlich maneuver you're gonna start trying to get whatever's stuck in their throat out if the air does go in and they're still not waking up and there is no pulse then you're gonna start CPR if you're by yourself you're gonna do that by taking two fingers putting it directly in the center of their chest and doing little mini pumps you want to go about one inch deep into their chest you're gonna feel like you're going a little bit too deep into them and you are but that's what you need to do to keep their heart pumping you might hurt them a little bit on the way but I guarantee you a baby in a hospital is a lot better than a baby in a funeral you're gonna do 30 compressions to the same rhythm as when you did it to the adult and then you're gonna give them two half breaths. Now, if someone is there to help you do it, you're gonna pick the baby up like this and with your two thumbs, you're gonna give them 15 compressions and then they're gonna give them two half breaths. And once again, you're gonna continue those cycles until either they wake up or the paramedics get there and kick your ass out the way. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Keep in mind that I am inside in AC and I'm still drenched in sweat and completely out of breath. This is not easy to do. You are literally trying to save someone's life. I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of resources here and down in the description below where you can go and get CPR certified in real life, like actually not just from learning it from my dumbass. If you don't want to learn this the right way to save someone else, 
do it for yourself because I guarantee that if you save someone's life, you're gonna feel good as shit. You are going to feel like you are on top of the world. So at least learn it for that reason alone. Also, this is my first ever long form, full length YouTube video and I truly don't know how to end it. So um, I thought I might as well give you guys a little bit of words of inspiration before I go. Um, I